Let us stand to worship our Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. you woke us up this morning and got us started on our way and now we are here not because of our goodness but because of your grace we ask you just to come on into the service stir us up Lord shake us up make us vessels fit for your service in the name of your darling son Jesus let us all say amen Amen. and amen
First, giving honor to God, to all ministers, members, and visitors of St. Timothy Community Church, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We would like to thank our greeters for the morning and they are members of the missionary group. Will you please stand? Amen. Please let us remember our sick shut in and the bereaved in our prayers. Please read the announcements in your bulletins and govern yourselves accordingly. The announcements for the morning are as follows. Will the following honorees please stand? Mr. Lewis Brown, Mr. Robert Green, Mrs. Pearl James, Mrs. Hattie McCune, and Mrs. Lucille Riley. These are our 2018 St. Timothy Community Church 90-year-old members. The missionary group welcomes you to join us for a reception in their honor immediately after service. Thank you. This announcement comes from the March birthday group. As you are aware, the March birthday group is sponsoring a trip to Amish Acres on Saturday, September 8, 2018. Activities will include a delicious three-course meal a theater production that will keep you laughing, and a variety of shops and tours. Again, don't worry about walking a lot. Amish personnel will take care of those who may need support in getting around. You will travel on a luxury bus with full accommodations. We will leave at 9 and return by 7 p.m. The cost is $65. The deadline is August 19th. Thank you. The birthday group that is March in up the King's Highway. <laughs> On Saturday, August 11th, Boy Scout Pack Troop and Crew 53 will take a trip to Indiana Beach Theme Park in Monticello, Indiana. Everyone is welcome. The cost is $40 for everyone 48 inches and over, $30 for all 48 and inches and below, $25 for seniors 65 years and up free for children under the age of two. We will depart from St. Timothy at 9 a.m. on Saturday, August 11th, and will return to St. Timothy at 9 p.m. Children 11 years old and younger must be accompanied by an adult. All reservations and fees must be given to Kalana Mack by Tuesday, August 7th. Any questions, please contact Kalana at 219-781-3801 you can sign up after church today in the REL Ministry Center. Your St. Timothy Community Church Missionary Group is providing new towel sets for the residents of Village of Hope, a new apartment complex for homeless individuals and families that was begun by Sojourner Truth House. Village of Hope is a place that offers permanent supportive housing, mental health counseling, parenting classes, nutrition services, and much more. Members will have flyers available after service today if you would like more information. We welcome you to help us to enhance the lives of the residents of the complex located on 11th and Madison. Community announcements. The American Red Cross Blood Drive will be held August 3rd, 2018, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Methodist South Lake Campus South Pavilion Conference Room. Community Health Net Health Centers will have $10 sports and school physicals at the Gary Hammond and Merrillville locations. You may call for an appointment at 219-880-1190. The Gary Literacy Coalition presents the annual Philanthropic Thrust, Thursday, November 8, 2018 at 6 p.m. at the Genesis Convention Center. Ray On My Mind, this concert theater work brings the music and the story of the great Ray Charles to vivid life, performing the hits What I'd Say, I Got a Woman, Mess Around, Georgia On My Mind, and many more. The music is interwoven with monologues depicting how gospel, blues, jazz, and country influence Ray's style, while also reflecting on American social history, his epic battle with drugs, 
and his triumphant return home to Georgia. For tickets and info, you may call 219-885-2229. And that concludes the announcements for the morning. At this time, we would like to recognize our visitors. We are pleased that you chose St. Timothy as your place of worship today, and it's our sincere hope that you would come and visit with us again. As your names are called, please remain standing until all visitors have been recognized. Barbara Jones, and she is the guest of Dewanda. Amen. Amen. Naoma Wade, and she is from Chicago, Illinois. The Rush and Young family from Detroit, Michigan. Amen. And Shirley Stanford from Gary. Amen. If there are any additional visitors, will you please stand at this time? Amen. Visitors, please give us your name. Visitors remain standing, and now Pastor Calvin Hawkins. We are just so delighted that each of you are here with us this Sunday morning, and uh, I want all the members to kind of know where these visitors are, because I want you to flood them with your love and, and joy and appreciation for them being here this morning. Now, I, I don't like to do this, but Sophia, you didn't mention. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to have to talk to the, the chair of the trustee board about you and your paycheck and stuff. <laughs> you didn't mention that Sunday after next is baptism Sunday. You didn't mention that. And then you didn't mention that service will start at 1045. I know why you didn't mention that, because you didn't want to be flooded with bombards of people being upset. <laughs> But uh, we are going to have uh, Baptism Sunday week after next. It's coming upon us really fast. Uh, after service today, confirmands who are going to be baptized will be meeting for their preparation for that glorious Sunday. We're asking that all of you and, and many more of you be here that Sunday because that's a significant time in the life of a person's life. Uh, we will meet... Uh, after service for training and for those who are not here uh, they can meet as a, a, a catch-up session on Wednesday at 5 and our last preparatory session will be next Sunday uh, after service and we're asking the mentors who were present to be with us too we need your presence and we thank you for your service uh, Notwithstanding the fact you didn't mention that, Sophia, you know what I'm going to say now, don't you? <laughs> God cares for you. And he cares for you. Let us care <laughs> with our neighbors.
It is that time in our service that we designate as stewardship time. We just ask, as the scriptures, to do what you can because what we have is really not ours. And we're giving back a portion of what he's given us. So do the very best you can for the master. The tithe has come first.
Yes, in my hands, in my soul, down in my feet, Lord, I feel your power all over me, yeah. I feel your power all over me. I feel your power, feel your power all over me. And it's in my hands, down in my soul, and in my feet, yeah. Thank God he Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, providing for us so that we may provide for others. Bless this offering. Bless those who have given. Bless those who had a desire to give. May this offerings be used in the furtherance of the service of thy people. In your son's name, amen. 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 It's prayer time in the life of our congregation. And there's a litany of matters that we could place before the altar this morning. We have members in our congregation who have health concerns. There are those in our congregation who have been beset by death family members. Um, their concerns of our city, people doing all kinds of things to one another which are not acceptable or pleasing in God's sight. And if you look on the national scene and the international scene, there's always some kind of turmoil that when we put it in our situation, it's far worse than we are. Uh, we just have a lot to pr pray for this morning. And then we're moving forward as a church. So we, we're moving toward getting a, a permanent pastor here at St. Timothy, and we want that process to be acceptable in God's sight. Our attitudes, our mindsets, and that our focus is on underscoring the goodness and grace of God in this whole process. So, Put that on your list. So I invite you to come forward and share with me at the altar at this time.
Heavenly Father, we come to you this day thanking you for giving each and every one of us another day. Another day in which we can grow in your grace and try to do things a lot better than we did before. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be a disciple in your kingdom. We pray for your strength and guidance that we might do your will. We lift up the concerns of this church and as, as it's moving in its next journey in the history of St. Timothy with a new pastor. We pray that you will best bless that new pastor and bless this congregation that they both together will be a force in this community for your good, for your will. And Lord, touch those in our midst who are suffering with ill health. Touch those in our midst who are suffering as a result of a lost loved one. Touch those in our midst who are going through all kinds of emotional situations. Touch each one, Lord, at his or her point of need. And Lord, bless us as we move forward in this worship this morning. Be with all parts of this worship this morning. And now, Lord, give us the confidence and the faith to pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Our Old Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Psalms, chapter 14, and I am reading to you from the NIV translation. And it says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand and who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all of these evil doers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. But there they are overwhelmed with dread. For God is presence in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our New Testament lesson, and we ask that you would stand. Our New Testament is found in the Gospel of John, 
chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. Starting with verse 1. Sometimes after this, Jesus crossed to the far side shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he had already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another disciple's Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy with five small, small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will that go among so many? Jesus said, have these people sit down. There was plenty of grass to, in that place, and they sat down Oh, they sat down, parenthesis, about 5,000 men, just the men. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given mm -hmm. thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted, he did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that were left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, surely, this is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they were intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountainside by himself. When the evening came, his disciples went down to the lake where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
supposed to be this morning men's chorus. And as I looked up here this morning, there were men, but I saw a woman. And the woman was a drummer. So we just thank Vanessa Nichols to be our guest drummer this morning. God bless you. So, Jesus, perceiving that they were intending to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself alone. Now, when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea. And after getting into a boat, they started to cross the sea to Capernaum. It had already become dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea began to be stirred up because a strong wind was blowing. Then when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near to the boat. And they were frightened. But he said to them, it is I. Do not be afraid. So they were willing to receive him into the boat. And immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. Look at me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let me come down again this morning. Let me come down. Ah! Oh. You all notice my robe this morning? You see these bars on this robe? They uh, indicate that I have a doctorate. In fact, I have two. I have two. I've got a Juris Doctorate from law school, and then my college gave me another doctorate as an honorary degree. So I got two. Um, I've written an article or two in the American Bar Association. I, 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 I got a number of awards. I've been in a newspaper any number of times. Some of you may have seen it for this or for that. Look at me. Look at me. Oh, uh, I've been a pastor at St. Timothy Community Church for almost, almost a year. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> the Look at Me homiletical title this morning is from my family. My daughter, more, more often than not, is the one that if she would see an article in the paper or an award that I would get, she would say, look at me, look at me, and it was not in praise. <laughs> look at me, look at me. And... Getting to this gospel lesson this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Some of you all are, are waiting for the sponsor. The sponsor this morning is the letter S. The letter S. First word, self. Oftentimes we focus too much on our individual self. I intentionally this morning, I don't know if you noticed in the bulletin this morning, and I call it a bulletin, specifically call it a bulletin. I want you to remember this. That piece of paper you have is a bulletin. It's not a program. A program is where you highlight performers. The bulletin is a 
to indicate this is a worship service. Okay? So this morning in the bulletin, you didn't see any names. Didn't even see my name under the homiletical title. Because this is a worship. I do not have to be underscored. I shouldn't be underscored in a worship. But, 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 sometimes people want you to be underscored. I don't know if you, that passage of scripture, Jesus, the loaves and fishes, a very common passage. And it it stands for a number of propositions that Jesus was sharing. And the, the persons that followed him would not go without, and the inner circle would be the ones that would have. That's why those other thousands, 5,000 people received food. And it was not just a few loaves from that, that little boy. But if you go on to that next section, section of the scripture, he had to leave. He had to leave because they wanted to make him a king and not the type of king that Jesus came to be. Not the type of king that Jesus came to be. Not the one with the fancy titles. And I I don't, look, I don't want to not. People who get titles and earn them, fine. But I'm saying in the context of worship, titles mean absolutely nothing. Absolutely, positively nothing. And Jesus recognized that with the people. That's why he fled up that mountain. It was almost how I felt. I came in here doing, (laughs) and again, I'm hoping and praying it was innocent. Because when I first came here, I said, look, I don't want no titles. And then the first session that we had with our candidates, my name was on the bulletin, on the front. The Reverend Dr. Cap, what in the world are they doing? No. It was, I'm sorry, it was very disturbing and disconcerting for me because I, I have an ego. Don't make it worse than it is. The second S, selfish. Because when we get so caught up in self, we become selfish. Now I'm picking on pastors now. (laughs) We are supposed to be disciples of Christ. Pastors, not talking about late folks. Pastors. Why is it At banquets, the pastor is at the head table, and he is given the first offering. He's the first to be served. In the Catholic Church, it's the the papa, the pope, and he's got all that regalia and that splendor. And the bishop, oh, he's got all the first. And the pastor in the local church, make sure the pastor gets on and so on and so on. Everybody else, you know, you wait till the pastor gets We're supposed to be servants. But disciples, period, are supposed to be servants. And if we're not careful, we get caught up in that selfness, selfness that becomes selfishness. Third S. I'm I'm almost done, y'all. We, as disciples of God's kingdom, need to be selflessness. Selflessness. We diminish ourselves so that we can do our Lord's will. Jesus came 
not to be this great military or political king. He came to be a savior. And his grace is sufficient to meet our every need. And you know the strange thing, if you really study scripture, for you biblical scholars out there, when he performed the miracles, he kind of like, oh, just like kind of step away, step away, because people can get caught up in this political kingship thing, this political dynamic, and it can mess us all up. So, look at me. No, don't look at me. Because if you look hard enough, you'll see some warts. <laughs> if you look hard enough, you'll see some, some, some lines, some wrinkles. And, and you'll find some things to really be critical of if you look at me hard enough. But if you look at God, you look at the life of Jesus and what he wanted us to be. You can grow and grow and grow and grow. And you'll understand what I mean when I say, look at me, but not look at me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, uh, we opened the doors of the church this morning. If there's one who, you know, wants to look at Jesus a little more than self, and who hasn't accepted Jesus in his or her life, we invite you to come forward. If there's one this morning that wants to come and say, I'm praying for my church because we're going through another era, we invite you to come forth because we're going to pray for that. If there's one who just wants to rededicate his or her life, we invite you to come. Now, I know I'm going to get some people to come up here to pray for church. So let's stand as we have a little music for folks to come to the altar this morning. Praise God. Let the church say Heavenly Father, we come this day recognizing that we are not perfect, recognizing sometimes we wallow in self and we become in self selfish. If we but give our all to you, we can become selflessness and be concerned about others and concerned about your will directing and guiding us. We pray for those persons at the altar this morning who represent many different concerns this morning. We pray that your Holy Spirit might guide and strengthen them and lead them down the path of righteousness for your name's sake. So bless us this day as a church family. Bless us as we move forward in your ministry. In the precious name of Jesus we pray, amen. Let the church
stuff too. I can do that stuff too. Let us pray. And just before I pronounce the benediction, uh, Martha Freeney's husband passed this past week. I understand her husband's uh, service will be this Tuesday at St. Monica, St. Luke, and I'm assuming 11 o'clock would check uh, the directory's obituaries. Heavenly Father, thank you. It's, it, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look at the Lord for salvation and growth and grace. And Lord, we just thank you for that salvation. We thank you for that grace. And as we leave this place, we pray that your peace and your power be with us now until we meet again. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.